whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. I will bless the Lord at all times. Who oh, magnify the Lord with me. This is the day which the Lord has made. Call it for purity. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and for whom no secrets are hidden, lends the thought of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worldly magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. one Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. This is the first commandment and the second is like namely this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than this. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So love the world. I gave his only son Jesus Christ to save us from our sin, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith. Family resolve to keep God's commandment and to live in love and peace with all people, making kneeling upon our knees. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbors. 
a thought and word and deed through negligence through weakness through our own deliberate thoughts we have not sufficiently walked according to the mind of christ we have named the name of christ but have not departed from iniquity we are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your son jesus christ who died for us forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in the of life to the glory of your name almighty god who forgives all who truly repent have mercy upon you Amen. pardon and deliver you from all your sins Amen. confirm and strengthen you in all goodness Amen. and keep you in life eternal Amen. through jesus christ our lord Collins. The Old Testament reading, Psalm, Epistle, and the Gospel. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless till they find their rest in you. Teach us to offer ourselves to your service that here we may have your peace and in the world to come we see you face to face through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Book of Proverbs chapter 14 beginning to read from verse 30 His son heart is the life of the flesh but envy the rottenness of the bones. He that oppress the poor reproach his maker, for he that honor him has mercy on the poor. The wicked is driven away in his wickedness, but the righteous has hope in his death. Wisdom rests in the heart of him that has understanding, for that which is in the midst of fools is made known. Righteousness exalt a nation but sin is a reproach to any people the king's favor is towards a wise servant but his wrath is against him that calls shame this is the word of the lord psalm 145 the lord upholds all those who stumble and raises up those who that are bowed down. You open wide your hands and fill all things living with your bounteous gifts. The Lord is near to all who call upon him, to all who call up on him in truth. The Lord preserves all those that love him, but the wicked he will utterly destroy. written in the first chapter of the first letter of Peter, beginning at the seventh verse. But the end of all things is at hand. 
Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. And above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves. For charity shall cover the multitudes of sins. Use hospitality one to another without grudging. As every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as, the, as of the ability which God giveth, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Gospel is written at the 25th chapter of the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, as recorded by St. Matthew, to commence the reading from the 14th verse. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country, who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to every man according to his several ability. And straightway took his journey. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same, and made them all the five talents. Likewise, he that had received two, he also gained other two. But he that had received one went and digged in the hearth, and he this lost money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents, behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, Thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things, and will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art an hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not stripped. And I was afraid, and went, and hid thy talent in the heart. Lo, there thou hast that is thine. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knowest that I reap where I sowed not, and gather where I have not stripped. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I shall have received my own with usury. Take therefore the talent from him, 
and give it unto him which are ten talents. For unto every one that art shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that art not shall be taken away, even that which he hath. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is the gospel of Christ. Let us pray. Thank you, our God and our Father, for this great day, the day of the independence of our dear country, the first day of the month of October. Thank you for mercies over us in the past nine months. Thank you for mercies over our nation in the last 63 years. Thank you for your grace that has gathered us together to celebrate the joy of the Lord on this occasion. Accept our thanksgiving in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, as we share your word this morning, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of the heart of your people be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord our God and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Happy new month of October. May this month bring joy to your life in the name of Jesus. This month you'll be blessed in the name of Jesus. You'll be favored in all you lay your hands on to do and the Lord will back you up. Congratulations to Nigerians all home and abroad on this occasion of the independence of our country. May the Lord revive our nation in the name of Jesus. As we celebrate the national independence, I want us to reflect on three hours today. Remember, repent, and return. Remember, repent, and return. And I've taken two tests for this sermon. The first one is Agai chapter 2, verse 3, and Proverbs chapter 14, verse 34. Agai 2, 3. Who is left among you who saw this house in its former glory? How do you see it now? Does it not seem to you like nothing in comparison? Proverbs 14.34 
Righteousness exhausts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. What do we mean by righteousness? The Greek word, they are your name, who put two simple words to us. It may mean both to be right and to do the right. Some people see righteousness as righteous living. That is, having a righteous relationship with God. Hebrews 11 verse 7. To be righteous could mean to have a right relationship with God and thereby producing the fruits of a right living. Righteousness is about doing what is right, not sinning. It is about serving the Lord in the right way. The Bible says righteousness exalts a nation. In fact, I like to add that righteousness defines a nation. Righteousness tells you the status of a nation. I like to ask this question this morning. What does Nigeria look like in 1960? It was a nation flowing with milk and honey. A prosperous land. We were looking into the future with joy, with nostalgia, with hope of a bright future. In 1960, Nigerians were living in righteousness. But today, what does it look like? Remember. A guy said, who are those who saw this house in his former glory? We live like the Bible says, we live today in a time when sin and abomination is common. There is corruption everywhere. Same-sex marriage is the order of the day. Kidnapping, shedding of innocent blood, cultism, adultery and fornication, perversion. In fact, today, people live as though there is no God. Many through the many in the church, but they are backsliding and they have gone the way of the world. Looking back at Nigeria 63 years ago, can we compare it? Righteousness is a world that is seldom altered in our world today. In fact, you don't even hear our leaders speak about doing the right things. They don't obey the constitution. They don't obey the lawful authority. They are the ones that will leave when traffic light stops them. In our country today, nothing is working right. The issue of being right or doing the right thing is no longer with us. We have lost our spiritual equilibrium and we are just doing what we like. We have ridiculed the word of God and we have called it moral pluralism. We are now worshipping idols and we call it cultural revival. We are now endorsing perversion and we call it alternate lifestyle. We now exploit the poor and we call it loitering. We have neglected the poor. We no longer give amnesty to those who deserve it. We give it to murderers and killers. We have, we have celebrated injustice 
in our land. We are now celebrating the abuse of power in our nation. We now convert our neighbors. We are polluted everywhere with profanity and pornography. And you know we call it freedom of expression. We have ridiculed the values of our forefathers. We have devalued the institution of marriage. And we call it socialization and civilization. We have lost the heritage of personal appearance and integrity. And we call it fashion. Our women now walk the streets naked. And we say it is fashion. What a pity. Who saw this house in its former glory? When you see our forefathers in pictures of 1960, 1963, they were well-dressed. Women tying rapper and gele, well-dressed. But now what is the picture of our country? Naked women, naked men. We have devalued our cultural heritage. The Bible says righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach. Do you know sin brings shame? Psalm, Proverbs 11 verse 3 following. Sin brings destruction. Sin brings evil. No wonder the evil that we celebrate in Nigeria today Sin is the reward for wickedness. It brings punishment. It brings destruction. It brings things that are not palatable. It does not bring blessing. If Nigeria will be blessed again, we need to go back to righteousness. The Bible says, tell the righteous, it is well with them, for they will eat the fruits of the land. My sermon this morning is talking to Christians. Do you know we have solutions to the problem of Nigeria? The solution to the problem of Nigeria lies with you and with me. Look at what the Bible says in Second Chronicles chapter 7, verses 13 and 14. God said, if I shut up the heavens so that no rain falls, or if I command locusts to devour the land, if I send pestilence and plagues to my people. Look at verse 14. He says, and my people who are called by my name, if they will humble themselves and pray, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear and forgive and heal their land. Brethren, we are Christians. The blessings of Nigeria is in your hand and is in my hand. Can we repent of the sins of Nigeria? Can we Christians humble ourselves? Can we ask for forgiveness from God? Remember, repent. Can we remember the old days and repent of our sins? Can we humble ourselves as Christians in Nigeria? Can we come to the Lord in all sincerity and repentance and ask the Lord to heal our land? Enough of divisions among Christians. We need to repent. We need to come back. Humble ourselves. And ask the Lord to heal our land. And I pray he will heal our land in the name of Jesus. Hosea chapter 6. Speak to us. The Bible says, come let us return to the Lord. For he has turned but he will heal us. He has striking, but he will bind us up. 
I am surprised God can change Nigeria in two days. The Bible says after two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will raise us up that we may live in his sight. We need to come back to the Lord in repentance. Let us return to the God of this country. Let us return to the Lord. Let us restore the broken unity in our land. When you go out before, a Nigerian is a Nigerian. But now when you go out, they say, no, you are a Nigerian. What part did you come from? We need to restore the unity of our nation. Psalm 133, he says that, that, that oil flows from the earth even to the beard. No division. Let us enthrone righteousness in Nigeria. If Christians are not righteous, who will be righteous? Psalm 1, the Bible says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor seated at the seat of this comfort. We want Nigeria to be blessed. Please run away from ungodly people. Avoid sin. Brethren, as we celebrate the independence of Nigeria, let us be faithful to God even unto death. Revelation chapter 2 verse 10. Let us remain faithful and righteous as children of God so that our land will be blessed. Let us be faithful in our devotion. Look at Nehemiah. Even our miss enemies he remained righteous. He remained faithful. Nehemiah chapter 7 verse 2. Let us be faithful in temptation like Joseph. In Genesis 39 verse 9. Let us be faithful to our nation, our community, and our friends. First Samuel chapter 18. Let us be faithful in managing what belongs to us. If we are faithful in managing what belongs to us, you will not steal. Let us be faithful in managing what belongs to us. Let us be faithful in our ministry, in our work, and in our service. Being righteous, being faithful, even when others are unfaithful. Being righteous, being faithful, even when others are doing otherwise. Don't join the multitude to destroy Nigeria. If you say everybody is stealing and you steal, that means you are not a Christian. If everybody is doing wrong, for God's sake, can you do right? Righteousness exalts a nation. But sin is a reproach to any people. We need a change of attitude. We need to examine our lives. We need to walk faithfully with the Lord. Remember, repent, and return. And as you go into the month of October, can I pray with you the Bible says, tell the righteous, it is well with them. In the month of October, it shall be well with you. You shall flourish like palm tree. You will shine like the sun. You shall be favored. Your house shall be filled with treasure. And the eyes of the Lord shall be upon you. In the name of God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. Amen.
the Lord be with you. Please kneel, let us pray. People of God, let us appreciate God on behalf of our country. Let us give God all the glory for the privilege he has given unto us to witness another independent anniversary of this country. Let us thank God for this far he has helped us. Let us appreciate God on behalf of our leaders. Let us appreciate God for whatever we are passing through as a nation. We surely know we have a better tomorrow. Give God all the glory on behalf of the church. God has not allowed the gate of hell to prevail over our church. Appreciate God on behalf of your family to witness another month in the land of the living, the first day in the month of October. Give him all the glory, honor, and adoration. Lord, in your mercy. People of God, this morning we are praying from Jeremiah chapter 50. We shall consider verses 33 and 34 as we pray for our nation, Nigeria, and as we pray for our family. Jeremiah chapter 50, verses 33 and 34. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the children of Israel were oppressed, along with the children of Judah, all who took them captive have held them fast. They have received, refused to let them go. Their Redeemer is strong. The Lord of hosts is his name. He will truly plead their case, that he may give rest to the land and disquiet the inhabitant of Babylon. I want us to take about two or three prayer points for this country and for our family. Let's talk to the Lord. Lord, deliver this country from every oppression. In every aspect, we have been oppressed. Lord, arise and liberate us. We are celebrating another independence. Can we please pray for this country? In every aspect, we have been oppressed. Our education sector, our economy sector, our security sector, every sector has been held by captive. We are no longer enjoying what we used to enjoy as far back as 1960. As we have heard in the word of the Lord, Lord arise and liberate us. We can no longer continue in this oppression and affliction. Rescue us, O Lord. He said, all who took them captive have held them fast. They refused to let them go. As many power that held this country, Lord, break them. Give us a new hope and new beginning. In the name of Jesus. We want a better nation. Lord, arise in your mercy and transform us. Verse 34, their Redeemer is strong. The Lord of hosts is his name. He will thoroughly plead their case. Lord, plead for this nation. Plead for our youth. Plead for our children. Plead for our widow. Plead for our aged, O Lord. In the name of Jesus. Lord, in your mercy. Let's commit our leader that the Lord will help them to know the right and do the right things. Lord, help them to be righteous from the presidency to the local government. As we are starting another journey as a nation, help them to know the truth and do the truth in the name of Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, please pray for yourself. You are part of this nation. Are there any aspect you have been held down? You want to progress, but you could not. Can you please talk to the Lord? Lord, in this month of October, I want to progress. I need liberty. I need freedom. Where have you been held down? Where have you been delayed? Are there any embargo upon your life, upon your finance? Where do you need your own freedom and liberty? Can you please talk to the Lord sincerely? As we are celebrating the independence of this nation, it is spiritually attached to our life. Talk to him. Lord, liberate me. Is it from sickness, poverty, debt, failure, setback, unnecessary body? Talk to the Lord this morning. Lord, I present to you my family, my marriage, my children, my health, my finance, my business. Deliver me, O Lord, from the hand of my oppressor, in the name of Jesus. Lord, in your mercy. 
Let us pray for the church and for the world. And let us thank God for his goodness. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promise through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray in faith. Strengthen Henry, our primate, Michael, our archbishop, Babatunde, our bishop, and all your church in the service of Christ, that those who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy. Bless and guide our rulers. We pray especially for our president, Bola, and our governor in Ogun State, Dako. Give wisdom to all who in authority and direct this and every nation in the ways of justice and of peace, that people may honor one another and seek the common good. Lord, in your mercy. Give grace to us, our family and friends, and to all our neighbors, that we may serve Christ in one another and love as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or in spirit. Give them courage and hope in their trouble and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear us as we remember those who have died in the faith of Christ. According to your promises, grant us with them a share in your internal kingdom. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all your saints, we commend ourselves and all Christian people to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, may we all rise. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another as a sign of peace. goodness we have this bread to offer with the heart has given a new man hands have made it will become for us the bread of life bless are you lord god of all creation through your goodness we have this wine to offer fruit of the vine and work of human hands it will become our spiritual drink
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Is indeed right. It's our duty and joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise. Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, to Jesus Christ, the only Son, our Lord, for he is your living word. To him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. To him you have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born as man and to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on earth. To him you have sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us a people for your own possession. And now we give you thanks for our nation. We give you thanks for the new month of October. Trusting you for revival. Trusting you for forgiveness and healing. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name. Forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy. Holy Lord, God of paramount, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the air. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Please kneel as we continue our prayers. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, this gift of bread and wine may be to us his body and blood, who in the same night that he, that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Amen. In the same way after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his suffering of himself made once for all upon the cross and proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. And as we look for his coming in glory, we celebrate with this bread and this cup is one perfect sacrifice. Accept through him our great high priest. These are sacrifice of thanks and praise. As he eat and drink this holy gift in the presence of divine majesty, renew us by your spirit. Inspire us with your love and unite us the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, through him and with him and in him, by the power of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you on earth and in heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise, blessings, and honor, and glory, and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. The bread which we break is in all the communion of the body of Christ. The cup which we bless is in all the communion of the blood of Christ. Amen. Many we are one body because we share in one bread. Lamp of God, you take away the sins of the world. Lamp of God, you take away the sins of the world. Lamp of God, 
you take away the sins of the world. The prayer of Umbu has us together on our knees. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much to gather the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave you, and his blood, which is shed for you. Eat and drink the remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your heart. By faith, we thank you. faithful even to the point of death and I will give you the crown of life. The Lord be with you. Please kneel and let us pray. And as our Savior taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We take the prayer together, Almighty God. We thank you for feeding us. With the body and blood of your son, Jesus Christ, through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be our living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and walk to your praise and glory. Amen. understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son Jesus Christ our Lord. The blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. and take our memory verse. First Corinthians chapter 1 verse 18. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. No cross, 
No cross. No cross. May the blessings of the Lord be always with you. Have a wonderful week.